Japanese Kozo paper or mulberry paper. It's used in the woodblock printmaking process. And actually, you can also use Thai Gozo, not from Japan, but from Thailand. That's what this is. And it's much more affordable than the Japanese Kozo. You can see how translucent this paper is, but the fibers are very long and very strong for the weight. So what I've gone ahead is I've measured in here in between the joint. I don't want to cover up too much of that old Rochester Public Library page because I think that's kind of cool, but I want to go about a quarter inch over that at least on each side. So I've carefully um, measured twice my markings there and I'm going to use the X-Acto knife for this. It's got a rough side and a smooth side. I'm going to go for the rough side down. And that is going to ensure, first of all, that the glue sticks really well. And secondly, it's going to match more of the texture to the existing pages. Now, I've got a ballpoint pen supporting this front cover because I want that kind of level and not cranked back too much this way because that would just create a lot more slack in that paper in the joint. It's more organic and from what I read a lot to use a wheat starch paste. But you can use either a plastic glue like this or a wheat starch paste. And a little goes a long way. So just run a very light bead down there. Same thing on this side, very lightly. And then I'm going to blend that into the fibers of the paper with a piece of wax paper here. Wax paper is good to use because it doesn't stick. I'm going to line this up as we first did. So it's always go and eyeball this stuff first and get it all set up in your mind how you're going to do the repair before you actually do the real deal and then very carefully and gently press that down along each end paper that looks pretty much perfect press it down with your fingers and work it in you'll be able to feel the glue this mulberry is so thin you can really kind of warm the glue with a finger a clean finger mind you as you go along and I'm working that glue and I can feel the glue and the paper binding really well guys because that is the rough edge of the Kozo mulberry paper and it's really adhering very nicely into that existing page. I can really feel it gripping as I'm pressing my finger. Now note there is absolutely no glue running in the joint area. Remember that's why you mark it off on each end where you want your glue bead because you don't want that to infringe on the joint in any way. I'm going to leave that to dry for several hours. And after that's dried, laid flat like that, nice and flat, I'm going to do the back side. Looks good. Center it right over the joint. Make sure you center it with your lines that you've indicated on the paper. I just got two little pencil marks. And after you get that down, just gently push it. Give yourself any chance to make any fine tune adjustments on the alignment. Press down gently with your finger. And again, with the rough side of the Kozo mulberry paper, those fibers really grab into the existing end paper cover. This is an old book, 1838, and the paper is blending in just really well with the natural old paper. Leave that for a couple of hours to dry. Lastly here, guys, see the spine, how it's cracked there, and this kind of light blue, gray, greenish color? Well, I'm going to match that onto the mulberry paper with some watercolor. And I've just kind of mixed up a color approximating the color of that spine. And what I'm going to do now is on the 
shinier side of the paper, the paper side that's not going to get the glue. I'm going to test a swatch of this. That is very similar to the color of the uh, book spine and cover. So that, I'm just going to go with it. Let's get a nice application. Just be aware that that mulberry paper really soaks in the color, man. I'm kind of surprised at how readily that's soaking in. Well, I mean, I guess it's printmaking paper, so I shouldn't be too surprised by that. So yeah, watercolor. I mean, this this mulberry paper in the printmaking process, as I recall, is pretty much made for water-based ink. So this is probably a good solution. And uh, just quickly work here and put some pigment on that paper. I'm gonna let this dry. And then my next idea is that I'm gonna repair the spine in the same manner we did the joint for the end papers. So after my swatch of colored paper dries, I cut out the dimensions just as I were doing the inside joint as before, but matching these areas that are worn here, making sure to get in the corners as before. Not too much. I do not want it leaking and eking out of the side. See, I'm gently applying pressure with my thumb there. Same way this way, just along that edge. Why I did just the edge there is there's a little fragment of the original uh, spine title there. And I like that little historical fragment. This is fraying down here and there's a little bump of frayage right there. So I just wanted to cover that up again while still keeping uh, some of that original title stuff as much as I could. Match everything up. Perfect. Great, so everything is dried overnight. You can see how nicely that's come out on the spine. Nice snug fit. End papers in the joint with the Kozo paper. Absolutely beautiful. I also shored up these corners, which essentially is a type of cardboard layers with the PVA adhesive. I debated putting Kozo um, corners on all of those, but I figured just shoring that up with the plastic adhesive and getting that in between the layers. That seems to have worked nicely. Plus I'm keeping the integrity, the original integrity of the book, which I like as much as possible. Please post your comments below. Thanks for tuning in today. This has been a really fun project and I'm really enjoyed playing with the Kozo mulberry paper.